I forgot to write down the songs. Uh, this is Dan Radio Style. It's Andy Grammer. Uh, good to be alive. Yeah, there we go. That's, that would have been wise to write those down. Actually, I'm hoping the camera makes it through this. Uh, it wasn't charged up, so I've been like waiting, just like trying to charge it enough so I could pull off this this quick one on. Um, one of the keys to manifesting is really making sure that you're kind of just in a happy place as you are where you're at right now. Right. And for a lot of us, like I know we're very focused on maybe trying to get that specific someone or trying to land that job, trying to get more money, more manifestation, more of everything. Right. And oftentimes we want it so quickly that we start to find the frustration in not having it yet. You know, a lot of us are kind of coming from that angle. It's really important to try to be happy where you're at right now, currently, as everything stands, and then try to do these manifestations or at least keep working on these manifestations. And like I said, when you've got your mind in the right place where you're happy with where you're at, that's where that letting go concept becomes much, much simpler. It's when there's a dependency or a need or some sort of, I have to have it for whatever reason, then that all of a sudden kind of creates emotional attachment to it. And that is when it becomes much trickier to let go, obviously. And that's where a lot of people end up reaching that point of frustration. And that's why they're able to do that. So the whole concept, like I said, of this particular show is happiness. Like, are we happy? What are some ways we can gauge that, right? I mean, certainly there's meditation, self-love, like affirmations. These are great ways to try to get to a happy place. Certainly affirmations, love affirmations. Find a couple affirmations and say them a couple times and just see if you feel better when you say them. Boom, copy, paste it somewhere else. That's one that you want to do. But one one kind of example that would de uh, demonstrate that maybe you're sort of happier in general, right? You're coming from a good place. You want others to share in your happiness. You've found this new law of attraction, for example, and you're excited about it because it does this really cool stuff when you focus your energies, when you get your minds going, and then you got that Neville Goddard thing. Oh, my God, it was a secret. You just imagine, and then it all happens. You want to share that with other people, obviously. It's exciting. So that's a good that's a good sign, right? Don't they don't necessarily want to hear it, mind you, but you, <laughs> you want to share it. That's the important part. Uh, you don't tend to sweat the small stuff when the little things happen, when the little bump in the road, like my thing, kind of you know, getting a delayed a week. Well, big whoop, not a big deal. It's cool. It's it's not a big in the big picture, especially considering how long I've been waiting. What's another week? Ah, who cares? Don't sweat the little things. The little things are not what matters. Keep your focus on the prize. Keep moving down the road. Uh, you're proud of other people's successes. This is a huge one because a lot of people kind of, well, there's two ways. I don't want to say a lot of people, but there's, well, <laughs> it's significant enough um, that might be jealous of someone else's success because they want success also. It's something I've experienced numerous times for sure. But yeah, you got to learn to look at someone's success and just be happy for them. And that actually, believe it or not, benefits your success by enjoying someone else succeeding at what you're trying to succeed at as well. And it gives you a good example of things that might work too sometimes, right? Um, you're in a healthy relationship right now. And that does not mean you're specific someone, specifically not them. You're in a healthy relationship with someone else, meaning you've got a best friend or a good friend, or you've got people that you can interact, have fun with, be jovial, laugh, giggle, whatever. You've got close relationships with people currently. If you don't, ah, that's a good one, right? Don't just wait for your specific person. Have your own life too. It's very important and it makes you more attractive if, if that's not where you're coming from at the moment. When something is stressing you out, you kind of know how to calm yourself. You know how to get yourself under control. You have techniques. You might go to the meditation. You might go to breathing. God, for me, breathing is like when I get out of control, just a few breaths, just in the nose, hold it, out the mouth, repeat that three, four, five times. It is really hard for me to maintain any sort of anger, uh, hostility, frustration, nervousness. Like It relaxes me immensely. So very powerful for me, breathing. Uh, but just affirmations, there's all sorts of different things you can do to deal with the fact that you're stressed. And in all honesty, the most important part is recognizing when we get stressed out. Oftentimes, we're so stressed, 
and so in the middle of it that we don't actually realize we're in the middle of it all. So again, that's something just kind of self-awareness, paying attention. It's a good thing. It also helps demonstrate. When you've reached a goal uh, and you have, uh, wait, I guess, ba- oh, yeah. Oh, well, making new friends comes easy to use one thing, but uh, you've reached a goal and you may have, Oh, yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> sorry. don't even understand my own notes. Uh, once you've reached a goal, you still look and you're like, ah, but I, I want more. There's still more. There's, I've been able to imagine even further now that I've stood here on this mountaintop, I can see that there's a whole another giant mountain before me, right? Like, once you've reached that level, pl- there's still a drive. There's still a focus, a push. You're still always looking to improve even yourself, right? Like, I'm, I'm a better man now than I was two years ago, and I'm sure in two years I'm going to be an even better man than I currently am right now. So we're still always kind of looking to move up. A good one, and I like this. I thought this was funny. It just makes me smile even saying it. Um, but say cheese, right? Cheese, right? Do you do that ever? Do you take pictures? Are there pictures where you're smiling and you're actually for a moment happy, right? It's a good thing, not just a fake smile, not a uh, he. No, a real one. Those are those are good fake smiles, I hope, right? Uh, also, there is nothing keeping you tossing and turning at night. Oh, this is a good one for me. Hello. Uh, <laughs> my new job, it was very, very tough, uh, the, the training. It's finally, it's stopped, I would say, about three weeks ago. But every Sunday night, every Sunday night, I would have nightmares about fixing computers and fixing problems. And it was just funny that depending on what side I actually rolled on, because I usually sleep on my back, that if I rolled on one side, I'd actually try to fix the problem. And if I would roll on the other side, it was like I'd think about the root cause. Like I'd be, <laughs> I'd be trying to figure out why is it doing that? Oh, it was insanity. So again, if you're able to sleep happy at night, you're in a good place. All right, I got a little bit of time, and it still hasn't gotten red on me, so I think I've got some juice left in this bad boy. All right, so I did find a, a survey that was actually on Oprah's site, right? So that's that you can trust that for sure. Uh, Oprah's good stuff. A uh, lady that grew up in poverty and became a billionaire. Uh, it's a pretty good, pretty good story, right? So this thing had a bunch of questions, and I am by no means going to go over all of them, but I did find like, I don't know, like six of them maybe that I thought were, one, really good questions to kind of bring up amongst all of us, and then I'll probably throw in my little tidbit. And then two, there's a couple of them that are basically opposites of each other. And I kind of wanted to use those as examples because I think it's a really good example of the difference between looking at something positive or looking at something negative, you know, glass half full or glass half empty, that kind of thing. And I'll tell you, when you're looking at a half full glass more often, you tend to be a happier person. So it was, to me, it was more to illustrate how we can tell how we can basically tell if something is kind of more of a negative thought. We'll see. We'll see if it accomplishes what I was hoping for when I did it. Uh, but the first one that really caught my attention, I believe my life will truly begin when the right person or circumstances come along. Now, a lot of people might, are going to answer that in a number of different ways. This kind of goes back to my original conversation, though. Ultimately, we need to be happy first. If you are waiting for an external source to fulfill your happiness internally, you're basically going to be needy to whoever ends up with you. And that relationship's going to have some challenges for sure. Or it's going to have a dynamic where this person enjoys making your decisions and you're okay with that. Maybe that works. But understand, if you're not already happy within yourself, already fulfilled, it makes it tough to actually have a good relationship. Uh, Kind of another good one. I feel best when I give unconditionally to others. Just the concept of giving. It was one of the things that really, for me and my special person, I just love loving her. Like, I, I just do. I, you know what I mean? Like, I don't need a darn thing back from her. I, I Like I've said before, I, to myself or to her higher self, whatever, I say I love you like tons of times a day, and uh, I love it. Um, it just feels good. It just puts a smile on my face. It makes me kind of glow. It even brings tears to my eyes sometimes. It's just freaking awesome. So... I don't know, whatever the case is, it just feels good to love unconditionally. Um, Here's two I think that are opposite. I'm hoping I finally got to one of them. Uh, When things don't go well, I feel trapped or overwhelmed. Again, that kind of goes back to how do we handle change? How do we deal with uh, things when they get frustrating, right? So if things don't go well, do I tend to get all all weird? Okay, well, that's that's a good indicator, right? Something to pay attention to. And then here's the opposite of it. 
Although life circumstances change, my beliefs and capabilities will allow me to survive and thrive. To me, I felt like that was because stuff's going to happen in life, period, right? Are we controlling type people that are constantly trying to control? Because you can't. So even if you're a controlling person, it's not a bad thing. Though it reminds me of a funny knock-knock joke. I'm going to say it really quick. Knock-knock. Who's there, right? I'm a control freak. And you say, I'm a control freak who? There you go. That's how you do that one. Um, yeah, so although um, life's going to change, what's our view on it? Is it, oh, no, or is it, I'll be fine. I, I handle, I adapt. Uh, I'm quick on my feet. I know how to do things. I'll be fine. I'll get by. It'll, I'll make it happen. Um, yeah, so another one. I've grown emotionally and spiritually through difficult and painful life events. It's kind of looking again, glass half full. When we start to realize that these things that we're going through in our manifestation process, for a great example, right, the frustration we sometimes get to, these things are actually helping us. And although it's always easy to see hindsight, right, hindsight's 2020. that's why they say that for people that don't understand the phrase, 2020 is like perfect vision. So whenever we look backwards at what happened already, you always see it with perfect clarity. So again, it's... It's understanding that these things that we've gone through while we're going through them are building character or to be kind of jokingly, especially with the, the few guys that are out there, puts hair in your chest, right? Like it's, <laughs> it's going to build character. It's going to help. It's going to help you emotionally, make you stronger, whatever. There's any number of great things. That's so bums. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we are almost to the end of this anyway. I've got a timer going off that was to remind me to unplug my camera because it's done charging. Uh, and I think that was the last one. That was the last one. So hopefully this kind of gives you an idea as to how we can kind of look at ourselves, self, uh, self-assess, if you will. Am I okay with where I'm at? I've been seeing comments lately from people that are like, you know, I finally got to this place of, of peace and calm where it didn't really matter anymore. And that is so, even, even if you want the relationship to happen tomorrow, if you can get yourself to that place of it didn't really matter anymore. I mean, I still love them. It, none of us, none of the people that say it, it's not that we stop loving. It's just that I'm with it now. I'm with the flow. It, I know it's happening. I'm in process. It's, it's okay. It's, 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 gonna, it's going to be when it is. And I'm just enjoying the ride. And I think that's really the difference is when you enjoy the progress, when you start to see the itty bitty steps, maybe at first, but then the bigger things start to happen down the road. And it just really, it brings it together and it just makes it so like uh, powerful and amazing. Like I've said, there's a whole level when you start getting close to the, to the end of this journey or to the start of your next, if you will. Uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty exciting. So also keeping keeping ourselves under control when we're overly happy <laughs> can also be a challenge sometimes. So again, that's a good problem to have, right? Being too happy, but still, uh, as you get closer, you don't want to get too lovey-dovey too fast, right? You want to kind of pace it, keep them, just pump the brakes a little just to keep yourself going, you know, a good pace. And it is amazing how things can play out. So a major key to manifestation, without a doubt, is being happy. And that's really how you get your energy in a good place, just being happy. And I know happiness is actually something we a lot of times can try to manifest just in of itself, but happiness is key, especially when we're trying to get back someone that we miss and love and maybe are in a, in a breakup right now. And it, it will help if, if you're being that person they met when you first got together, right? Instead of this person that maybe is a little grumpy and because there's tension, you know, there's so... Just things to think about. I know we're all in varying stages of where we're at in our relationship cycles and what we're trying to do and what we're learning and what our, you know, ultimately our next steps are going to be. But it is a, a beautiful part of this process, to say the least. Uh, all right, we're going to be going out with a great Counting Crows song called One Republic right here on Dan Radio Style. Woo. <laughs> Kills me, makes me feel alive